So take it away, you. All right. So let's move on to the current status of MJRU. Uh, here, um, so we have uh, uh, patch set 14 currently uh, being tested in Linux next. Uh, patch set uh, 15 um, is expected to be in uh, 6.1. And we have uh, eight downstream, downstream kernels that have been carrying the patch set. And uh, we have uh, um, two additional uh, backports working in progress uh, for Raspberry Pi and WSL2. Uh, those are um, uh, 515 kernels. And also uh, we have posted uh, eight server benchmarks and uh, there are two more working in progress. And we are working on uh, JavaScript and JVM benchmarks. So next page. And the next step, um, we plan to uh, make the uh, MJRU default. Uh, currently, it's, it, it is defaulting all Chromebooks, and it, it will not be the default uh, key, fun, key config when it lands in 6.1. Uh, also, uh, MJRU comes with uh, an efficient page table scanning mechanism. It can help uh, detect empty page tables so that they can be freed. Also, it can help detect TGPs with high internal fragmentation so that it can be split. So I'll uh, touch on the details later. And also, uh, we are working on integrating MJRU with eBPF. Um, basically, MGRU itself, the uh, core algorithm, it's aimed to be simple. Also, um, the entire framework, it tries to be flexible. So it's designed these uh, complex heuristics and special use cases to eBPF. And um, the, uh, those eBPF programs can obtain page access information from MGRU. Also, uh, those programs can override the default generation assignment. That is uh, uh, assigning different hard code pages to different young old generations based on use cases, uh, based on different use cases or uh, additional hints from user space. So we will have the uh, demo later. So, um, how to make the uh, uh, MJRU default? Uh, there are two major obstacles. The first one is uh, free, free bits and paid flags. And uh, currently, uh, MJRU requires three additional bits in page flags to store generation number for each page. And on 64 bit CPUs, this is not a big problem because uh, there are usually plenty of free bits. But on 32-bit CPUs, uh, some build configurations may not have enough bits uh, left for MGRU. So we want to uh, free some existing bits to make room for MGRU. So the current plan is to move RRU-related bits into the lower bits of PGRU pointers. Basically, we have uh, um, two uh, pointers in the uh, linked list node, in the uh, IRU linked list node. So uh, the lower bits are not used. So we can uh, fit some uh, MGRU related bits there. Uh, specifically, we want to move page active, page unevictable, and page swap back into lower, lower into uh, the, uh, the pointers. Uh, those bits, they are, um, they are not modified when uh, a page is on our list. So it's, it is safe to use uh, uh, the lower bits of the RLU uh, link list node. Once this is done, uh, we can um, turn on, we can make the MJO the default for all CPU architectures without breaking any build configurations. So, uh, also, the uh, second uh, major obstacle is uh, limited performance test coverage on page reclaim. Uh, many regressions usually uh, 
were reported only after they had hit the uh, production systems. So uh, we want to minimize the uh, negative impacts on the end users. So we have to uh, proactively identify regressions. So to do this, we need uh, uh, a lot more test coverage. So currently the uh, uh, test coverage that is available to us is, is far from uh, being enough. So uh, a minor concern here is like uh, is the uh, code health. So we need to uh, uh, refactor the uh, MGRU code into a new file, probably, and probably gonna adapt the uh, slab 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 mode uh, a model. We have different uh, files for different RUs, and uh, um, also uh, we want to turn on. Uh, we also turn turn off the existing RU. If you want to, only want to use MGRU, there's no point to uh, build the uh, existing RU. So um, the stability is not an issue because uh, MGRU has been proven in our production system. So uh, also there are, uh, many distros have been carrying the MGRU patch set. So um, it's proven very stable and they're having memory pressure. So uh, as I mentioned before, MGRU comes with an efficient page table scanning mechanism. So we want to read. Um, so uh, basically, it, MGRU scans page tables to clear the access bit. And this, this is highly optimized. Uh, for example, it tracks whether a process has been sleeping and uh, it skips those that have because um, if a process has been sleeping, they can't access memory. So it also has a built-in bloom filters um, to filter out uninteresting page tables. Uh, for example, uh, if we have a page table populated with code pages and there, there, uh, there's no point to scan it if we are, if we are only interested in hard pages. So it also uses um, the uh, access bit in non-leaf page table entries. So this is currently only supported on x86, and the, uh, with the, the that uh, with the uh, that access bit, we can uh, it can narrow down in the search space when um, when working page tables. So basically, this page table scanning mechanism can be reused for multiple purposes. And the first potential use case here is to detect empty page tables. And uh, um, generally, um, unused page tables can cause a fortune. And this was discussed um, during the, uh, uh, the last LS LSFMM in May this year. And there, there's also uh, an LWM article uh, on this, it captures all the details. So we won't go to go into these details. And uh, here, I think uh, a uh, producer consumer model may materialize this idea. Basically, uh, we want uh, the MGR, MGR page table scanning is the producer. And it works on different processes one by one. And when the, uh, it finds an empty page table, from a process, it enqueues this empty page table, and then the consumer can be dedicated thread, and it decues the empty page tables belonging to the same process, and free them in few large benches. So uh, here I, I, I need to uh, emphasize on um, the um, process. This is a per process. Uh, the the uh, the queues are per process so that we don't have to uh, take M math log for write for, for, to free each page, empty page tables, because otherwise we're gonna cause the uh, M log table, uh, M math log contention. So next page. Also, uh, we can leverage the page table scanning uh, to detect THP internal fragmentation. 
uh, tier two internal fragmentation is, is a long standing problem and often causes capacity loss without noticing because um, kernel generally has no knowledge of how well user space uses, uh, utilizes uh, THPs. Also, uh, THP is not suitable for clients like Chrome OS or Android, mainly because of the internal fragmentation. And also, uh, during uh, uh, MGRU uh, benchmarking, we found that uh, THP internal fragmentation uh, had a uh, very bad negative uh, effect on several applications like MemCached and Redis, because uh, those uh, KV in memory KV stores, they use the smaller projects uh, on average. The object size they use is like 700 uh, bytes. So giving them THP is basically uh, with lots of space. So uh, the worst case scenario here is like uh, accesses to a single 4K page, base page, uh, would make an entire THP seem um, really hot. And uh, since now this entire, this THP only has one access bit and this shields the rest of uh, five, 11 pages from page reclaim. So uh, those five, 11 pages might not uh, have been used at all. So uh, basically uh, MGRU page table scanning can help detect HPs with um, specifically this scenario. So, uh, for example, if we have a THP and um, when, we, uh, when the system is under memory pressure and MGRU page table scanning can periodically swap the PFD mapping of this THP with 5 to 12 consecutive PDEs. And uh, this, uh, this 5 to 12 consecutive PDEs, this is a special mode. So it's still considered collapsed. It's, it's not the uh, split mode. Yes, question? Yep, okay. Uh, have you seen the patches from um, Alex at Facebook that uh, are, he, he has a, a, a THP scanner that scans, he, he's, he's only doing it for anonymous pages right now, and what he does is he scans to see which are entirely zero. And that's not giving you a hot cold, but it is giving you a never used versus uh, sometimes used. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have, yeah, I have replied to that thread. So basically with uh, five, 12 consecutive PDEs, uh, we can not only detect internal fragmentation, we also can detect the uh, utilization. So that means uh, if we have TGP and the user base only uses the first, page, first base page, then um, the uh, rest of uh, five to 11 access bits won't be set. So based on this information, we don't need to scan anything or we don't need to really uh, look into uh, the, the content of those pages. Does it make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Okay, thanks. So, uh, where, oh, where was I? Okay, uh, yes, here. Uh, so uh, I think uh, there, there was a concern here um, about um, uh, TLB misses because uh, some hardware also offer something called TLB coalescing. So uh, if we map consecutive PDEs, uh, if we use consecutive PDEs to map consecutive physical pages, the hardware can collapse multiple PDEs into a single one, sorry multiple TLB entries into a single one. So this is currently supported on uh, AMD, then two and I think ARM, newer ARMs, uh, ARM V8.2 uh, and later. So uh, once the, we can de detect the uh, internal fragmentation of, the th of this THP, and we can determine whether to protect it from page reclaim, Right. If this TGP has uh, you now appears to be really hot, but it has a high internal fragmentation, 
we can stop protecting it, right? We can just ignore the access bit because we know that the access bit only reflects, you know, the, the accesses on, on, on a few um, base pages, not at the entire THP. So then uh, page reclaim gonna split this THP and evict the code pages, and, but leave the hard pages in place. If the utilization is a bit high, we can just swap those 512 consecutive TTEs back with the original PMD. So we don't have to take the, we don't need to take the uh, MM block for write because previously we said um, the uh, 512 consecutive PTE mode is considered a collapsed mode. It's not the sweet mode. Okay, I have I missed two more things here. So additional ideas to leverage the um, page table scanning um, include probably um, to improve NUMA balance by detecting uh, misplaced uh, NUMA pages. Also, uh, and might be able to speed up the KHPHD by detect hard PTE tables. Uh, one comment or one question. So uh, I think like the, the foundation of what you described here is that we can actually recollapse a TAP, THP once it was mapped via PTEs, correct? Um, yes. I think, like having that might be beneficial either way. So did, did we consider implementing collapse of transparent huge pages that have been PTE mapped? just to remap them into a THP. Because right now, what we would always do is we would allocate a new transparent huge pages. We would migrate everything over and essentially throw the old PTE map transparent huge page away. So I, I was wondering if it would make sense to just start with that and then play with all of the other approaches of like temporarily remapping something, uh, which is obviously uh, more involved, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, and one yes. other question there. Um, were you proposing here that we actually do a split and collapse here, or just that we do some page table magic underneath the covers to just put a special page table entry there? Uh, the latter. Okay. Because basically this 512 consecutive PDE is going to be a new mode. It, it's not the uh, split mode. It's not, it's, not, it's not equivalent to the existing split mode. Because if, if we consider... If we consider this uh, 512 consecutive PD the speed mode, then we would have to um, take a map lock for write when we collapse it. We, when we swap, yeah, we swap it back with the original PD, PMD entry. That sounds very interesting in theory because you're right, it would take kind of all of the software conversion and out of the picture. But we have a lot of code that does like if you know, PMD huge, right? It goes and looks for, is the hardware large page bit set? So has anybody looked into this? Is this is this hard or is this just a matter of adding a little more handling to these pages? It's going to be I'm, the I'm way. Not sure, I'm not sure. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure why, why we're talking about this as a new mode. I, th I thought we already distinguished between splitting a PMD and splitting a page. No, but I, I think, do we? I mean, well, yeah, because you 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 leave a, a THP alone in in the page cache, right? You, you don't split a page in the page cache just because one of its users has decided to unmap part of it. Anonymous memory is a little bit different because sometimes you want to, if you're splitting it, you want to either put it on the um, the the deferred free list or you want to just split it straight away. But yeah, I mean, we 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 definitely have like the the gut for split mode, which only splits the PMD. It doesn't split the the page itself. I guess we do have that now where we separate out the table mapping from the, that's a, that's a good point. Okay, uh, again, like, uh, go, go ahead. Split a, split a PMD, we never collapse it back. So in order to recollapse, you need a fresh transparent huge page. And that seems like a reasonable optimization on its own, I think. I, so, I so think that's yes, there, yes, there, there, there are two uh, overhead um, there. The first one is like we have to, when we collapse uh, a uh, small page into THP, we have to take a map, uh, a map lock for write. And the second one, we have to do it, uh, we have to migrate the uh, small pages, even they are consecutive physical pages to a new THP. Yeah, but 
So we want I don't to avoid think that, you, that you would need um, MMA block when you recollapse the same page that's mapped. You're not replacing it with a different THP, you're just changing the mapping. I, I think we could get away without the MMA block in write mode. Yeah, we, we uh, can, that we is can what get, you were We can get away um, with both, with both the yeah, MMA block write and the migration. Just wanted to say that the initial reason I think for the splitting of page tables and the THP itself was disconnected is because splitting of uh, in the page tables cannot ever block uh, while the splitting of page can, so it can be it's different. So to mm -hmm. keep up mm -hmm. okay, so. Uh... I'm gonna have to re uh, skip part of uh, this um, presentation. As well. It's unfortunate that you know uh, the audio um, didn't work at the very beginning. So I'm gonna hand it over to Yuan Chu. He's gonna uh, talk about the BPF part. Yuan Chu, you're muted. Ah, yes, the classic problem. Uh, okay, let me see how this controls thing work. Um, I can move on to the next slide. Okay, cool. So I have a quick demo to show that I can add um, BPF support to MGLRU page table walks to obtain a per process heat map. Um, I think my control. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I, so, I was controlling for you. So uh, did you see the uh, plus button on on, on the? Uh right on the left bottom yes okay just okay back. can i click this i think the animation is showing up here because this is a video and i'm trying to play it anyways i uh i whipped up a quick demo of um of this heat map tool capturing the the heat of a mem tier memcached benchmark um yeah yes question so most lakes are visible you may have to share your screen of the video from the uh the slide deck instead of the pdf for the video oh this is a pdf no uh i think oh, oh yeah right this is a pdf but i think there's a link this is a pdl file so if you click the link i'm not sure what's gonna happen so while he brings that up, I realized we didn't introduce uh, MGLRU at all. So I guess some of you were at LSFMM and it was discussed there. But the uh, the kind of high level is that we were motivated to reduce the overhead of page table scan or page scanning and um, also improve the decisions we make about which uh, pages to kick out. Um, so Yu Zhao came up with MGLRU um, and it has done both of those things. And in a very literal sense, the numbers that we've seen so far are kind of incredible. It's across the board, we see really massive improvements um, in CPU overhead and, uh, and we're picking the right pages to evict. And so on Chrome OS, that translates to more tabs available or more tabs open um, and lower tab switch times and just better behavior overall if, we've, if we're running multiple VMs like Android uh, alongside Chrome OS. Um, so it's been a really great thing. Uh, all of the server benchmarks have also been um, pretty positive. Uh, so far, we haven't found use cases that, you know, expose pathological behavior. So if you haven't tried it yet, I encourage you to try it. It's queued in Andrew's MM tree um, for 6.1. So if you pull down his tree, um, you can check out the documentation and code. Um, and it should improve, you know, even local stuff like build times. Any luck, you want to on the? We go. Is it working? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we see it. Okay. Yeah. So I whipped up a quick demo showing uh, showing the heat map tool capturing a memcache benchmark. It's going to. So I'm just showing uh, how I'm getting the. Yeah. So it's a standard Debian installation. So the benchmark first tries to populate linearly the uh, 
a bunch of keys and then it does a, a Gaussian access on all of the keys. Yeah, so this tool actually supports uh, configurable aging intervals and aggregation intervals and through BPF is able to hook into the MGLRU page table uh, page table walks and uh, get all the access information out of there. Um, it's also triggering the MGLRU aging with uh, BPF as well. So that's kind of cool, driven by user space. Oh, and I sped up this uh, this video because it would take a very long time otherwise. You know, in, now that we're running short on time, I'm kind of glad we did that. <laughs> Yeah, this is a very still very rough proof of concept, but you, you can see that it, it has pretty good potential. And I uh, I just posted this yesterday on LKML, still relatively new to the, uh, contributing. So fun time. Yes, uh, I would like to add that this is uh, only the first step. So uh, we. We plan to introduce uh, eBPF programs to um, additional um, memory management components like NUMA balancing and the Hewlett pages. Because uh, we just felt like um, there there are a lot of heuristics and uh, we could move into eBPF and also uh, eBPF programs can help uh, improve uh, many special use cases. Yeah, so this is a quick visualization. There are other modes other than displaying the heat. You can also show the NUMA node of each uh, each region and show whether a whether the region is uh, mostly anon pages or other any or other um, like like you said. Um, page access information can also be used to inform the MGLRU page generation placement. So right now the generation, when when the page is accessed through page tables, it's automatically promoted to the youngest generation, but that's not necessarily the best thing to do. And having page, having a uh, page access information will help the user space make better decisions. I will stop so sharing. Matthew, tab. probably it's time to move on to the next speaker. Um, but thanks a lot, you guys, and glad we were able to get this through. So please follow up with, with these guys on the mailing list or on the Matrix chat if you have specific questions. Um, and looking forward to seeing this land. Thanks, everyone.